Hey, what's going on guys? How all you are doing? Welcome to the fourth tutorial on the tutorial series of making a control management system with Laravel. Hopefully we are in the fourth tutorial. If you haven't watched the last three tutorials, make sure you watch them before coming up and watching this one. For this particular one, we're going to talk about uh, like, you know, models and like the database and how we're going to use MySQL with Laravel and all of this kind of stuff and what is a model and how we're gonna bring the data from database save it save the instances delete from it and of course we're gonna go to the layer of our, our control management system and hopefully do the category thing like insert a category and do a form and we're with the category name just press enter and gonna be inserted in our database this is the basic thing of model thing so Laravel has a really basic or let's say a powerful a model a class that allow you to retrieve data also put data in the database and supports many database drivers such as mysql which we're going to use in this particular case you can use any driver you want just search for google Laravel drivers for the databases and gonna have like mysql mysql i but i i'm gonna use personally for my projects mysql you can use whatever you want now for this oh you're gonna need to set up the database on your environment so on your project open up with code editor as i've said i'm using visual studio code feel free to use any code editor you really like now open up the dot environment and go ahead and search for this is the environment file going to be in used go ahead and search for it as you can see this database can connection by default it uses the mysql and the host is on our local host 127.0.0.1 the port is 3306 and this is the, your database name and the username and your password so this the environment file gonna be secret file so when you upload it or you deploy it into your server this file won't be available for public of course so it's gonna be hidden on the server no one can access this only you with the shell access so with that we're gonna keep using mysql and here puts your database name with that we need to create a database so uh, I'm using exam in this particular case you can access your PHP my admin or see your databases using localhost forward slash PHP my admin and you're gonna get you into this page where you can manage your all your databases data that are has been stored in your databases so or if you're not using exam make sure you search how you can access PHP my admin or any other client it uses by your software or something make sure to access the database and create database so I'm gonna create a simple database called Laravel-CMS for the sake of this tutorial, then click just create into the databases, of course. Now into this database, we're gonna create, uh, like it needs from you to create ta tables. So we're not gonna create tables that way. This is kind of an old way that you don't really want to use. You can, we'll, what we are actually going to use is migrations. Now migrations is another powerful very nice thing from Laravel that supports talking or like managing tables and the columns on your database so let's say you do the migrations then deploy it in your server the migration is gonna run like automatically and create that all of this like tables columns and set them all of you for you so you don't have to do anything right away so for that you're gonna need to Use migrations just after making the database level CMS. So you pretty much go ahead and go to your environment file, and here you're gonna put the the database name, then your username. Of course, I'm gonna hide this. So sorry for these guys. This is very like sensitive data. So then your password, and this is all you need to do start doing a migration so migration allows us to create tables and columns as I've said so for that you're gonna need to go ahead let me close this close the route and for making things like a bit tidy for the workspace and go ahead and find the folder called database and under that you're gonna find a migrations folder and here all the migrations all of your migrations are gonna go into here so if you're a bit confused with migrations they are very simple thing just some structure or like mysql uh, commands gonna be done when you run like php artists in migrates gonna be run and just do or create the tables on the specified database 
in the columns as well for you so you don't really have to care about this when deploying or when moving your things from like when, let's say you're working on teams so when sharing your files with the, the other team member you don't really want to have him like create this table create this column yada 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 no it's gonna be done by the migrations in an, an automated way so gonna be very simple as i said go to the migrations or pretty much we're not gonna create a manual you're gonna use the php artisan command line so make sure you are on your directory here the zamp and using the terminal so if you don't know about this again make sure you watch the last three tutorials before coming up into the fourth one so for this as i've said php artisan and i'm gonna make my migration and we're gonna call it make sure you use underscores instead of spaces between the words and on name in the migration so i'm gonna call create and make sure you just put the name of this like what's what is gonna be done like creating a table create the category table create the post table or create the admins table so like call it we're well, doing the category and specifically so we're gonna do it create category and table as simple as this and we're going i believe this is all we need to do so phpr scene make migration and this is gonna do it for us just wait a bit of a second now create a migration and it's gonna append or prefix the dates that this migration has been created on and now if you go to the migrations like you see create uh, this create users and password are pre-defined with Laravel so if you are going to use Laravel authentication system this is gonna work for you very well but on the series i don't think i'm going to do an admin thing so if we will do like an admin series where authentication and login system we're not going to use this basic stuff we're going to create our custom things because custom things are very powerful than this is very just basic things now after it's created successfully let me just minimize this and here as you can see there is the this class create category tables and it has a bunch of use illuminate so what's this illuminate thing is pretty much like saying this is the main core of laravel so laravel has uh, pretty much a lot of files like c files it has helpers that help you build your application so are all under this illuminate so illuminate holds all the laravel core files so like just using the schema then allow us to connect to the database and create tables on it and the blueprint as well just gonna allow us to create a table increment create ids columns stuff and this is the migrate the main migration model which we're gonna extend from our class or extend from it so this has two methods one is up and the other one is down the app is gonna be used for migrating for creating the table and the other one for dropping the table so you honestly don't really need this drop thing table anyway but into some 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 circumstances you will so for that this is where you need to put your things like table increments this is going to create an id and also increment id column under the table of category as you can see so if you want to like change this table name puts whatever custom name here like a table or something gonna be created into your database but i'm gonna leave it as a category which is gonna hold all the other categories we create on this ca mess so for that we're gonna say a category gonna have a name so a name gonna have a string so like this so you put a string here you can check out all the available blueprint methods gonna allow you to create the columns under the table by seeing the, the Laravel documentation, the official Laravel documentation, but just by, by googling Laravel blueprints and gonna gives you whatever you really want to check out. So for that, I'm gonna create this called name, and you can the second argument can accept how the maximum number of data gonna can hold. I'm just gonna keep give it 200. Okay. And this is the same as a variable char if you are familiar with databases on MySQL. So like you're saying, a variable char here or string is pretty much the same thing. Another thing is gonna create as well as the string, another string, and I believe is the author. So who created this? Because let's say we have multiple authors that can connect, 
or have access into this control management system or CMS. So they should create this respectively, like create categories. They, they should be authored for this category. So who created that category? So for this, we're gonna call it author or we can call it created or let me think for a good name. Okay, author can do the job perfectly. So author, and I'm gonna give it about 100. So the author name gonna just, the maximum is 100. You can just, this is an optional thing to be done. And this timestamps thing, as you can see, like half table, then timestamps is just like a timestamps, other two columns with the timestamp, a created ads column and an updated ad column. So when you hit, or when you create this kind of, um, this is gonna be for the table. So when you create or add and you record into this table, a timestamp or the created ad gonna be holding the created date. And when you update this specific, specific record, the updated ad gonna be updated to the specific date you've done the update, it's very simple. So this timestamps are just like a timing things, it's very helpful, so you should keep it. If you don't really, or you want to use your custom things, just remove this and add the date, time, timestamps here. You can use it, and as I've said, you can check out the documentation. Now, this is what I really want to do with this, so we can take the name, the author, and let me think, give me a second thinking, so we have a name, an author for the category, and this is, maybe we're gonna have in the future, so like a subcategory is for that particular category, but I don't think so. I'm gonna implement this. this is a kind of a, a simple thing. As soon as you understand this, you're gonna be able to do the other one in a very simple way. Now, for migrating, let me clear the screen for you to make it clear enough. So, you can use as well artisan, so PHP artisan. I'm gonna say migrate. So, it's gonna migrate this or migrate the last things for us. So it's gonna create a table and access denied for Islam Pinus at localhost and using a password, yes. I believe I have a password misconception in here. I can put in my password in the wrong way. Let me check this out guys. Give me a second. So, and migrating again. So make sure you put your right password in there let's see what we have we have access violation but the migration table created successfully but we have auto table users uh you we don't really need to care about this because this is coming from the user's migration file this uses a password but our category migration is working pretty much fine as we have seen here like it is working perfectly like migration table created successfully now go ahead and check out our database in here level dash cms and we should say users which created by default by level and we have our migrations but there's no category thing i don't know this is a bit confusing guys let me check out what is going on exactly like something is wrong give me a second guys please now after a bit of direct lines and uh, I've came into like Laravel has included like there was some kind of an users and a migration migration files I've deleted them and that everything was going nice that because when it comes in my tries to migrate your your tables it finds an error in the first users table so it stop it, it won't like goes into the create categories that's why we weren't seeing anything in the let me in our table just the migrations of the user so we can drop this yeah i don't really need them so let go with the selected empty or drop okay dropping yes force drop and that should do the job perfectly so if you have encountered this error make sure you delete all the other migration just create your things like the users and the migrations file just do the or, or your created category migrations file keep it there then do php artisan migrates and everything should goes in nice and smooth way as you can see successfully migrated now it goes back refresh this and we should see the category of the migrations migrations is being automatically added so don't care about this 
just care about the category now if we go to the category we see the structure of the author name the created at the updated at timestamps that has been added automatically by Laravel for us by this function as I've said timestamps now I've created this user migration and you have seen what migrations can do now let's move on into the model so a model is pretty much like is a database table that an instance of database the table through Laravel you can save your instance you can update it you can delete it as simple as that so when you create a record in here let's say you want to add a category called web development and with an author of Islam and created ads at 2011 2017 and updated that as well 2011 2017 with an ID of zero or one and that you want to delete it so you're gonna use a model pointing to that and find it using the ID key or any other like here its name or author or created ads or update ad we don't usually use both of these so we're just gonna use the name or the author or the ID so Laravel is very very nice has a very nice collection and eloquence class that will help you through this so for creating a model it's very simple we're gonna use this for this the instance of the category to do that make sure you are on the directory of Laravel and do PHP artisan make and for everything you want to create make sure you append the make then the colon then put a model so a model then name your model make sure the model is gonna be singular not a pillar plural pretty much sorry and I'm gonna call it category and a couple cases at the beginning and this is all what we need to do so pressing enter the group gonna create a model for us as you can see let's see what we have in there mean one of this what create a model oh i'm sorry model with an e not an i so let me try this again so sorry this guy is make model and i'm gonna continue my category as i've said okay now model should be created successfully let me clear the screen for you and it goes up into the app and you're gonna find it just on the app let me just collapse this and you're gonna find this category a model extends from the model and our category so for here we can specify which category so by default there we're gonna look for the category as the name of the the the, the model pretty much so if your name is category gonna go ahead and look on the database for a table named category as we have in here but in case you have another like your model name is different from your database table name so what you can do is just define a protected variable or just specify which table you want so we can say protected not like this so we're gonna table and you put the name of your table for me as a category so and this is all what you need to do so this is the model for us this extends from that what pretty much need to put under the model thing we don't need to put a lot of things in here maybe the fillable we will talk about this later on so for now this make it as simple as possible now after creating this i'm gonna need to use this onto a controller and for the controller we need to make a controller for the category specifically because we have just created a controller for pages control like for the static pages not for everything so or just for the dashboard and stuff but for this particular thing, I'm going to create a category controller which controls category adding, removing, an Ajax call. We're going to talk about this, all of them on this series. So for that, as I've mentioned before, so artisan make and controller, I'm going to name it category controller. And making it a resource, okay, we make it a resource. And category controller should be created successfully clear the screen and it goes into the category controller now in the index page should point us or should redirect us into our category page and with that we're gonna return a view with name of we're gonna create it under just let's see we're gonna create it under okay pages the category and this is all what we need to do now let's go ahead and create this view blade file and we goes into our views and the resources and find actually pages and I click new file category 
.blade.php. Okay. Now we've created the file. Let me just do the things like extend from the main app. We're gonna say layouts the app. Okay. And put the section. So main dash row and and section. And this is what I'm going to put on. So let me create a div. Uh, as you can see here, when I use this tab thing, gonna automatically complete the elements for me. So this is called emits and pre-configured pre -configured with Visual Studio code, like from the latest version and on. So if you really like it, you can search for emits and it's really nice extension. So let me put that. I'm gonna use bootstrap for this. So let me call column metal and I'm gonna give it about we've used it too so I'm gonna give it an eight and I'll give it an ID of main dash category and symbols this so we're gonna call or give it or this is gonna be the header so category dash header and here we're gonna give it an H4 for categories and yeah another one for like category dash container okay and let's see this is the, gonna be the chain symbols that we're gonna come back for this and create a form for adding categories so going over back into our file and we haven't pointed into a site area to go into this so let me do that. And before this, actually, let's go ahead and add our route to the web.php uh, route. So going into the routes, web.php, and specify our route for the categories. So our categories, let's create them or comment them to make it better for you to understand it when you go into the source code in the GitHub. Make sure you see this in the GitHub. So I'm gonna just call the route for a slash category I'm not going to give it a function as we have done in there. Now we're going to point it into the controller. So, and I haven't done this for this. So, I haven't done it for the dashboard actually. So, look, I will fix this later on. For now, now here we're going to specify the controller name. And we have our controller called category controller ads. And this ad specify which functions you can take care of. So, with that we have that goes back into the pages or the pages controller no no it's not pages control so I guess nice I mean the category controller okay the category controller and we have our index so let go back into the routes and uh, that's arts index and you can name your route to access it later on so naming the route is really really useful for you to access the route when changing like changing the routes point what the routes actually is pointing to so this is as i've said very very useful you can name it like category then dot index and this is the naming convention is really nice i've used this a lot so make sure you follow this convention because it's very very helpful for you in developing in under any circumstances actually so yeah as i've said very simple now this is has been added now what we're left for us to do is actually go to the site area and we're gonna find this under the enclosed site area and we should go into the category and here we should specify which route and that's why we have named the route for this as i've said putting this will echo just what's gonna be in in, in the, the middle in there so in the middle of there so i'm gonna put routes and this route function gonna return us a valid url and routes we're gonna put here the name of the route so the name of routes we have to use in there like the category index we need to put it in there so category dot index gonna do the job perfectly now let's go ahead refresh our page and see if this is gonna really work for us or no so go into the category just wait a bit of time waiting waiting okay now the category now we should press this gonna take us into category and it should return okay we have a problem category or does not exist so it can't find let me see this class category controller does not exist can't find the controller specifying at the 
other routes like category controller let's see let's see let's see our controller okay we have category okay we are misspelling this so i'm sorry for this guys uh, we shouldn't do that so category missing i in there or e and category okay now after make sure you type category correctly and now should works perfectly without problems actually refreshing now it should be taking us into the main page of our category and as you can see categories can trade and we're not seeing this side area because we haven't included that under the blade of our category so we can do this simple as possible by going ahead and including it up here as we have done so include specifying the folder is under the quote and side area okay now goes ahead make sure you save before because you need to save up in every single changes you do so level gonna be done and i guess this is it so for that i believe it is Minutes and thirteen and twenty. So let me just run a bit of time. Now we are going to talk about uh, the form and wh what form we're gonna use. We are gonna use uh, a for library called Laravel Collective, and this Laravel Collective is like a lot of all special form things like rather than creating a form in the old ways or in the habitual way uh, let's say you want to create a form into the container of course so i'm gonna name it like this is gonna be our form and i'm gonna name it uh category dash form okay you may we'll want this so so let me do that manually i'm gonna give it an id of category dash form and in there i'm gonna create just a form and put everything but here i'm using level collective uh, you shouldn't take care about this till we see this so we have level collective how to install it is using composer require in which version they added your level collective class into the providers and the aliases as well so and for opening a form is simple as saying like this special methods of form open and a form close and everything is going to be working fine so let's install this in our project we're going to use composer make sure you're an open project directory and composer require and i'm just going to copy all of that for the sake of the time okay this should require the package for us and updating the composer json Reopening composer repositories, you should wait a bit in order to complete. Then we should take this and add it into the providers. And let me copy this. And the providers are actually under our configuration files. To find if there's a folder into the app is or not the app actually. Yeah, the main the main I believe the app? No. Okay, the main directory and we're gonna find the configuration go to the app.php and i believe is there no i don't know it's all yes yeah, it's, it's into the end of the board the app.php gonna find the providers goes down and here you can put your providers in the middle here it's better to put in the middle so just paste this collective class class make sure you put the comma after that and also add the aliases the aliases should find them just in the bottom and you're gonna find your aliases in here or put them actually in here so uh, doing that form html in order to make Laravel recognize this there's still dependencies or updating the packages for that so let's do this should be now working no further ado okay now still requiring for packages now after everything has been successfully done and the Laravel collective has successfully been installed so let's go back and 
close this and it goes into here now let's open up the form so you can you can get the extension if you're using digital code from the extension to get this like into license thing so form open and here you can put the url the uh, let's say i believe in here we're gonna put the route which route you're gonna be pointing to for now it's an empty and which method is gonna be used and i'm gonna use or let's call it the method i'm gonna use the post okay of course because we're gonna post in data and make sure you close the form so yeah and here you put all your inputs we only have one input and one label so form label and for what and the label gonna be category name and the text of the label gonna be category or just name and the options here you can put any like bootstrap classes or assignments into the classes assigning classes or ids to it so another one is the input so the input is being done as text so instead of putting inputs you can put text or text area so for the name is going to put as the same as the um, label for so category name okay and the value should be empty and here we're going to have a bootstrap class going to help us styling this and it's going to be like form i believe form controller i can't quite remember this guys so uh, form control something like this I don't know, let's put this under, uh, I don't know, I just want to remember this, a form control or something, form dash control, try form control, okay, now, yeah, should be, everything should be set up now, let's see, let's go ahead and refresh, more pages, Make sure you read the different documentation if you really want to know more about this Laravel Collective and use it in bigger projects. So, and we have in routes not defined. The route is not defined. Let's define just the custom routes in here. We're gonna be called category dot add. Okay, just we're gonna run on this route later on. And <clears throat> let's see, should work now. <clears throat> not defined okay let's define here you can instead of putting routes you can put a url so it pretty much works like the normal thing you feel free to use the normal uh form forms within html so i go to the web.php and that's like category add and uh, maybe this video gonna get a bit long so I'm gonna take post request and I'm gonna be add category into this specific and we're gonna take it into our controller category controller into the specific function of store okay so we're gonna accept of course a request method so name I'm uh, gonna be category dot add okay and for slash add category and that should make things clear a bit now let's refresh and every should go wrong fine and now we should see the our form showing up of course yeah you can add a bit of style into this container to make it looks a bit nicer than this it's like very basic so name here you can put your name of course there's another Thing I forgot about maybe you can add a place holder in here and put whatever like category name on it and we're gonna put it into the place holder I totally forgot about this so let me just screen this a bit and now let's store the category on our database this is gonna be very simple we're gonna talk about Ajax in maybe in the next tutorial or next or the tutorial after it so now we go to the controller as we have specified in our route is going to be and do the category controller store so let's go into the store function it's already being defined uh, for us by using dash dash resource option so we request store it's going to take a request and request is just like a lot of our requests going to have all the data uh, being submitted from here so 
like using a normal PHP thing or like you'd say in post from PHP this is it so let me store this so firstly I'm gonna need to get the ID and for that are we gonna pretty much let's see we have we are going to add this so uh, we need to initialize this initialize the category so for that we need to include the model under our controller field. So we can use app or backslash and you put whatever your is called so we have category for me. Or because we are using the namespace you can just call it the use category. Or because we don't so we have to specify this minus over these guys. So say up category and you, you have the model in here. Now you can initialize it by calling the category equals new category. I create an instance of this and now you can add to it. So category, we have the name field. So the name you can access are pretty much like a variable. So name equals to whatever the name from the request and the name from the request to access this you should put it pretty much the same as the name of the actual input field. So go ahead and check out your input field. Like you have text, this is our input field, and this is the name of it. So copy this, or it's pretty much the same, and it should be here. Like request and access like a variable category name, and sh that should bring us whatever text is gonna be put in here. So yeah and we have an author so an authorization for now we just gonna assign it into a slim pin with sort of custom author so i'm gonna say author equals stamp pin os okay now after adding all the fields make sure you save it so you see category save and your instance is being saved and you should return like redirect him into some place or redirect him with a message so for now we're gonna use uh, session so we're gonna call the session but we don't have session variables we're gonna talk about the session later on for now we're just gonna redirect him into uh, back so say redirect back and this back make sure like you direct him uh, on the last URL like back on the URL now let's check out this but we don't have a submit button. We haven't created a submit button. I don't know why. So submit and things like sub add category. And for that, let me add a bootstrap class. So gonna be called btn btn dash success btn dash block to make it looks a bit nice you can learn about uh, learn or bootstrap classes by googling that it's very simple so let me check we have i category let's say category and let's just try to add that category hopefully this will work fine I don't know. So we have a problem doesn't exist. CMS categories table variable CMS dash categories doesn't exist. Insert new categories. It's looking for CMS category. Let's see. We have protected table. Let's specify our table in here. So why this is not taken in account? So the problem was just pretty much some composer dump auto reload. So if you have faced this error or if you face this error, make sure you just type composer. So the problem was just pretty much some composer dump auto reload. So if you have faced this error, dump them, if you face this error, gonna work fine. Make sure you just type composer because just I have done this and have a lot of audio so so that you are running something very basic then and everything's gonna work so this pretty much so this won't happen have for you anyway. because now after because just now we're gonna test this again this and have refresh this project, category so thing you are running something very basic for the first time much. so this won't happen anyway 
Now, Everything after, should be working fine now. Let's, let's call this, this again. Let's kind of refresh this call, category thing. Or let's call it web and developments. Okay, I have this uh, screen made for me. And everything this should, should be working be fine now. Let's no success messages or something. Going. Like you don't know if let's this has gone web right or wrong. Okay, so we have to check out the database. We're gonna implement this like sessions and error messages. Have no success messages or something. Next one. Like so you don't know if this has gone after this. We're gonna right refresh. Or wrong. So we have I'm to check out the database. We're gonna create like all three something in this sessions and the time steps. So this as simple as this. Just creating it. And it was gonna very, refresh. very simple, by the way. Gonna see so, web development thank you for watching. I hope you really the enjoyed this. Steps. If you enjoyed so, this, this is as simple as this. Just create. Check out the website for and it was very, very simple. And be helpful. So, I'm becoming a patron. That would be I very, very happy for us. This. So, the this. next tutorial, I'm gonna have a couple of check other websites website for you. About mailing, about a lot of, lot of other things. Helpful. That would be very, very nice. So, thank you for watching. I've said this again. So the next tutorial, anyway, we're gonna have a couple of the next video tutorial. Alien, so a lot of goodbye. Them. Very very nice. So thank you guys for watching. I've said this again. Anyway, see you in the next video tutorial. Bye. Close the shit. Close it. Shit.